Here uh, we have been asked to find a uh, ellipse so that its axis is directed along this given line. It passes through this particular point P so that will become its vertex. Then it is tangential to this line at this point T over here. So this is somewhat similar to one of the problems that we solved earlier only there the axis was completely given but the point of tangency wasn't given. So the given data was a little different something like this here and we are doing a variation of that. Okay. Now the steps. First we uh, you know extend both the tangent and the given line of axis till they meet at their point of intersection i. Then we are going to drop a perpendicular from the point of tangency onto the axis. So s is the foot of that perpendicular. Then we are going to draw a circle with p as the center, the vertex as the center and the foot of the perpendicular as uh, the point on the circle. So sp becomes its radius. Then we are going to draw this semicircle with pi as uh, the diameter. And you might have guessed looking at this circle and this semicircle like this uh, that we are going to construct a tangent. And indeed we'll be constructing a tangent. In that connection we take this point Q, the point of intersection of the semicircle and the circle. And uh, we draw the tangent IQ. Only we are going to extend it further till it meets the extension of this perpendicular. So both we have extended so that they meet in point R here. Then from this point R, we are going to draw a perpendicular to this extension of the tangent. Uh, let that perpendicular meet our axis at say point C. Actually C is going to be the center of the ellipse that we are trying to find out. If that is the center, we already have the semi-major axis. So we have to find the semi-minor axis now. For that I will uh, draw, uh, I will uh, uh, project this point T onto the radius here. So this is going to be the radius of the directing circle. Uh, then I am going to draw a perpendicular to uh, the axis uh, from the center. So this is the general direction of the other axis. And then I'm going to draw an arc with C as a center, CM dash as the radius till it meets this direction of the other axis. Uh, let M be the point at which uh, the arc meets it. And uh, this will be the, our uh, semi-minor axis in that case. We already know the semi-major axis here. So knowing the two, the ellipse can be drawn. Uh, our construction as such is over, but just to you know connect it to the other construction that we had seen, I'm going to draw a circle with C as a center. So it is going to be concentric with the ellipse that we have. So with C as a center and CP as the radius, okay? and uh, you can see that it passes through this point R. And that is why I was referring to this CR as the radius of this circle. Finally, let us see why this particular construction works. Let us remove the clutter from our diagram. So I'll remove all the unwanted lines. And uh, I'm going to stress uh, once again that an ellipse is nothing but a circle that is compressed or scaled in one direction. And everything else uh, uh, follows. For example, if you take this circle, its diameter, and its tangent and if you rotate this circle its tangent uh, along this diameter then you are going to get this ellipse and this tangent even the point of tangency will be just translating uh, downward along uh, a perpendicular to this axis okay so we are looking at it as a projection or a scaling so in this connection, we can simplify this problem. Instead of uh, you know trying to find this ellipse, which could be difficult, we are going to find this circle. And once we have the circle, we have the ellipse as well. So that was our strategy. In that connection, uh, look at this particular arc, say RP. It is subtending some angle at the center. Let us call that angle as say alpha. Okay. Then 
the angle subtended by uh, this chord say RP uh, and this tangent RI is going to be half of alpha because those two are uh, encompassing the same arc see this angle PRI is encompassing this uh, arc RP and this angle RCP is also uh, covering the same uh, arc. The difference is one angle is subtended on the circumference, the other is at the center. So this is half of uh, the angle at the center, angle subtended by the arc at the center. Okay. Now, uh, if you look at this angle, say SRP, then even that angle is going to be alpha by 2 because uh, this angle say S R I is going to be alpha Half of that is over here. So the remaining part must be over here. So alpha by 2 and That makes this line R P or this chord R P the angle bisector of this angle Okay, this particular angle and angle bisectors have a beautiful property if you draw a circle with its center on the angle bisector then it is capable of being tangential to both the arms of the uh, of the angle at the same time if it is tangent to one it will be tangent to the other also and that's the circle we made okay. so this is that circle it is tangential to this line and drawing this line was easy because point s was given to us Okay, or point T was given so we projected and got this S so that was easy point P was anyway given to us so drawing this circle was easy but that helped us to get this tangent because it is going to be tangential to this circle and getting this tangent and knowing this T and S we could find R then drawing a perpendicular to this tangent Okay, which is now tangent not only to this circle but the bigger circle as well so drawing a perpendicular to this tangent over here we could get the center of the circle which is of course the center of the ellipse that we were looking for and then we just took this circle and compressed it uh, using the rest of the construction that's how it works